So we have Academy Award winner Octavia Spencer teaming up with Melissa McCarthy in a superhero comedy. Oh, I'm here for it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of Just My Opinion for my movie review for Thunder Force. And if you happen to like this video, please give me that thumbs up and consider subscribing. So I'm a huge fan of Miss Octavia Spencer. I think she's a very talented actress and pretty much anything that she signs up for, I'm going to show up and give my support. When it comes to Melissa McCarthy, I think she's funny at times. Sometimes her jokes fall flat to me, but sometimes, you know, I'm laughing out loud hysterically. You know, I remember when I first saw her in Bridesmaids about 10 years ago, I thought she was like the funniest thing in the universe. Since then, it's been kind of hit or miss, but I'm still a casual fan of her work. But before we go any further and get into the nitty gritty, let me tell you what this film is all about. In a world terrorized by supervillains, one woman has developed the process to give superpowers to regular people. But when scientist Emily Stanton accidentally imbues her estranged best friend with incredible abilities, the two women must become the first superhero team. Now it is up to Thunder Force to battle the superpowered miscreants and save Chicago from the clutches of the king. Now I'll just go ahead and say this off top. This film is definitely by far not for everybody. Even if you are a fan of Octavia Spencer and a fan of Melissa McCarthy, that does not mean that you will enjoy this film. Even if you do like superhero movies or comic book movies and you have these two actresses involved and you're a fan of them, that still does not mean that you will enjoy this film. This film is for people that just don't want to take anything seriously. Just relax, laugh and have a nice, goofy, silly, over the top fun. If you are a fan of Mad TV or Saturday Night Live and you're into that type of comedy, then I would say this film is for you. Even if you're not into that, you still may find some chuckles here and there. But again, it's not for everybody. If I mean, I'm a very silly person. I'm a very goofy person. And so I really did enjoy this. And as far as the story is concerned in this film, it's very simplistic. It's very straightforward. You know, nothing complicated at all. And I'll even go ahead and say that some of the story points were a bit forced just to kind of push the story along. It did not flow smoothly. But I did go into this movie Thunder Force with my expectations extremely extremely low. And then especially since it's on Netflix, not shooting on Netflix and that they put out crappy productions. But I think when you're watching a movie at home, opposed to going to the theater, you know, it does lower your expectations. And so with me going in with just super low expectations, I think that did help me enjoy the film the way I did. As far as the characters are concerned, I was also a bit skeptical because when it comes to Melissa McCarthy, she's hit and miss with her comedy. Like I said, I loved her in Bridesmaids, but not everything else. I tend to get tired of not just her, but just a number of comedians that are considered by society to be overweight or obese, to have a ton of fat jokes. Um, like there's some large sense of insecurity floating over their heads. I mean, all the way back to the 90s, we got that with Chris Farley, rest in peace. We also have a number of that uh, scenes with that with Rebel Wilson, who is another actress in Hollywood right now. And also, you know, it was with Melissa McCarthy, too. I get kind of tired of that. And it's just not really funny to me. But I am surprised that there was really nothing like that in this film at all. I mean, they showed Melissa McCarthy. She was a goofy ball character and you really couldn't take her seriously. And, you know, her, her character's name is Lydia. She wasn't that responsible. But at the same time, when her character was in a corner, you know, she fought her way out of it. She stood her ground and, you know, really didn't take any crap for anybody. She wasn't going to just stand there and be disrespected. And I, I do like that about her character. Uh, other than that, her character was a bit, you know, come across as drunk at times and just like she didn't have it all there. Like she wasn't together or was inebriated half of the film. But that's just part of her character, you know. But while I wasn't in love with her character, at the same time, I did respect her character and what the director, the writer had to do with it. And that is Ben Falcone, who is married to Melissa McCarthy in real life. I think they've been married since 2005. And he's also directed a number of her films like The Life of the Party, The Bar and Tammy and I don't think I've seen any of those films that he directed 
but I have seen him in other films with Melissa McCarthy and I, those I did fairly enjoy. When it comes to Octavia Spencer's character, and she's a genius. She she's went to school. She's read all the books. She is responsible and she's really trying to change the world. And, you know, seeing her in a superhero comedy, you know, is kind of out of place for me, too. But I think she did a great job. I think she was a great addition to this. You know, when I, I first started seeing her in more goofy roles until she started being nominated here and there. Um, and doing the Academy and Golden Globes and all that. But this film right here kind of goes back to where I first started to see Octavia Spencer on screen where she's doing more silly and goofy roles. It's nothing over the top. It's not buffoonery or anything like that. No, I, I think that she's upgraded from that a bit. But, you know, there was a few comedic jokes that she did land um, that I thought hit home pretty well. And um, I, I laughed. I mean, just you know, throughout this movie, there was a recurring joke uh, about someone thinking someone said something in Korean. And every time it came up, I laughed out loud. You know, I mean, it's just a silly movie that you just don't have to take seriously. When it comes to the superhero stuff, I'm actually impressed with how they handled it. They had a number of fight scenes and had powers uh, usage as well. And I liked it. It was very well choreographed. It was thought out. You know, there was actually plot within the action. It wasn't just people fighting, you know. And another thing about this film that I love just wholeheartedly on the on top of everything else is this film is very self-aware. It knows exactly what it is. It's not trying to be anything else. And it steps out of itself, kind of breaking the fourth wall and makes fun of itself and makes fun of other superhero comic book movies. When there's always the protagonist and the antagonist on screen together, there's always some long dialogue, some long monologue where the villain is explaining his plans, you know, increasing the chances that the heroes will thwart them. And there was parts of that in this film, elements of that in this film. And I really do like the way they handled it. I thought it was clever. I thought it was smart. And it was just, it was just fun. You know, also, this film comes in at about an hour and 45 minutes. And I think that's perfect. I mean, you know, yeah, hour and 45 minutes to be exact. I think that's perfect because I don't like long films unnecessarily. I don't mind a long film, but it does, if, it, if, it, if, it, if the film doesn't need to be two and a half hours or two hours, then don't make it two hours. And I think the runtime in this film fit perfect. You know, there was never a point where I was bored. I love the transition of Melissa McCarthy first getting her abilities and how she's trying to learn how to use them as time goes on, as the film progressed. And they use the, the montage that they use to display that, you know, was great. I mean, it was long. It wasn't just, you know, a series of edited films with motivational music in the background with no dialogue. It was kind of like chopped up, like, you know, five or 10 seconds of, you know, a montage. And then you have regular footage and they kept going. And it was like a 10 or a 15 minute sequence and I really do like that because montages do really help tell a story but the way they did it in this film was quite different so I have to give credit to Bing Falcone the writer and the director you know for this film again this is not something that I can recommend to anybody but if you do like these two actresses if you do like comedies and superhero uh, comic book lore and you are a silly goofy person and I have to underline and bold silly and goofy I think you'll have fun with this you know, unless you're just bored, it isn't anything that I would just rush to the theater to go see. But if you have a Netflix subscription and you just want to turn off your brain for a little bit over an hour and a half and just check this out for some goofy, silly fun in the vein of like a Happy Gilmore or a Billy Madison, I think you're going to have a great time. And so I will go ahead and give my rating for this film at the very end. But guys, that is just my opinion. And I want to thank you so much for tuning in. If you did like this video, please go ahead and give me the thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel and also follow me on social media. But guys, again, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. And if I had to rate Thunder Force out of a 1 out of 10, I'll go ahead and give it a 7 out of 10. Yes, a 7 out of 10. Mind you, that's low expectations, low expectations, low expectations. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Peace.